So hello everyone again. Um, yeah, let's go quickly for um, material setup. So acrylic paints um, for rabbit, then mainly of course lots of white. Yes, to make um, lighter. And then I'll be using ochre light and burnt umber. Um, also, sometimes I use this gold color and it looks really nicely. It's kind of the same like ochre. Yeah? It's just a bit more transparent on paper and shiny. So it's like some extra. And then of course, black for some dark parts. Um, and then the eggs you choose, the colors can be the same as I have, can be one, all one color. Yeah, as you wish. So color wise, pretty much like ochre. Yes, and then uh, adding up some brown and black. Also, if you have um, a sponge, yes, um, I've used it for the background, kind of just very nice, easy, quickly also like, and, and the brushes, the classical setup, some small for details, some medium, and maybe a bit bigger for larger areas of, of background. Yeah. Um, yeah, and as always, feel free to stop me if I'm rushing or um, yeah, ask questions, send your in-between uh, process if needed. Yeah, but your experience. So. <laughs> All right. Yeah, but we go anyway for sketch quickly, even if you well prepared. Hi, Mel. Hey. Hey, hey, hey. Hi, Mel. <laughs> hey. Yeah. So even if you have the sketch, let's just maybe quickly for the bunny, for example. That's what you know. Yeah. Um, try not to make it small. Yeah, so I don't know, even if you already did it, there is always also you can kind of larger up a bit, um, but it's also a bit easier when it's a bit bigger. Yeah, to to paint. Um, and small is never my problem, Evie. <laughs> that's that's a good attitude. <laughs> um, yeah, but it's usually kind of, for example, I would start marking the basket at the bottom, so just to to mark um, kind of the high proportions. Yeah, the, for the head, I would leave a bit more space. Yeah, so then it's, we kind of usually leaving um, at the top twice bigger than at, at the bottom. And then the ear, one can kind of um, make it larger or a bit more curvy. Um, like uh, intentionally, yes, so. Um, yeah. And to, to avoid getting into details. For me, it happens all the time. So I literally have to stop myself. Um, one ear can be a bit cut by the paper. So it's not necessary that you can fit it all uh, in. So one ear can be nicely big. And then we can, then you try to find this size for the head. Yes, and once you have it, then you can try um, fitting in all, all the rest details. Yeah. Eyes are pretty much small. So, yeah, so here, I, for example, I'm sketching and I'm, I, I'm lifting a little bit the head and ears. Yeah, and it's also when, when you when you sketch, if there are some dark parts, then um, you can kind of color them at once. 
the darker yeah it's it just helps for so yes we're making sweet easter bunny around the eye let's say so i have this black black part and then around it i still have a little bit of white that can even be left a little bit just as paper yeah so when when it's when the, the story is about eyes then usually that's yeah what happens there is like um many lines around so we have uh, uh, this black and then one one thin line of white and then another some line of shadow so eyes are always with this um, and yeah then we can sketch the basket also don't forget to sketch this the part of the body yeah, behind the basket and the, um, the basket itself so I just kind of, I don't try to make it very, very um, detailed. Uh, I try, I do it more like st stylization for, yeah, for this handle. So it's just kind of these curvy lines that, yeah, because, so of course I was drawing from this picture that we found on, yeah, I think it was Jews or someone who just spotted in the internet. And in the photograph, of course, you can see lots of details for this. But um, for the basket, it's more like catching this direction. Yes, and a little bit maybe making thicker in the part of the basket that is closer to us. And this um, left side, it goes a bit more um, far away from us there we can make just thinner lines. So with this graphical way, you can show the, and then the eggs. Okay, I'll repeat just the ones I have here, but you of course feel free to both color-wise and quantity-wise have them to your taste. And the, the only, Think that of course um try also if you have your eggs differently than mine you still kind of mark yourself where the highlight is gonna be so as always the spherical yeah shape should have it and yeah? then there will be some shadow also maybe can be just mainly on these frontal ones Yes, the ones that are visible a little bit, maybe that's also not not so much. Huh? Not, but, no, but, and yes, and here we can mention this body. So it's very light, but don't forget it here aside. Uh, the shadow of the basket, I also suggest making it light. So sometimes we make shadows very contrast, very strong, but in this case, it's uh, it's more like just a, a little accent touch. You know? um, can think also, for example, of course, a bit like later with the paint, but still maybe the bunny will have, a, so not the, the contour of the bunny will be not a straight line, but uh, like more fluffy, like a fur, yeah? Um, so of course now let's say you have it with the pencil, um, but it helps. Yes, if I now with pencil I mark it fluffy, then later I remember and then I don't go with just a straight line with paint. And but at once I do this. Um, yeah. so. Yeah, can uh, take a look and mark maybe a bit more details on the face. Yeah, so there is a bit darker here under 
So in between the nose and lips of mouth is darker. And then just um, yeah, kind of go and mark the dark parts. So maybe also we can see one of his little hand and shadow. And sweet pen. Yeah, I think you're all done. Huh? <laughs> I'm here uh, just uh, uh, sketching. So we're moving to the paint. Yes. Uh, so I will be putting, so I'm putting ochre. Yes, or ochre light. So here. And then, then I'll put brown. Then at once I will put black as well. Yes, I'm putting now the bunny colors and um, the eggs and the background when we do later. And I put a bigger pile of white paint. And that's it, I will not use the gold that I've used here in, in this pre-drawing. Uh, yeah. Just to show it also can be done without. Um, as usually, let's start with the light uh, part. Yeah, so I mix, I take a bigger pile of white and then some ochre. Yeah, so I'm getting this very light tone. I can, we can actually uh, do, um, yeah, let's start with this and then we do the same with brown. So we will get also kind of pale brown. And what I do then I just trying to spot, okay, where we where I have these light areas. So let's say here in front of the, in between the eyes, here on top of the, a bit around the nose, and the ears. And I, I'm not worried, I just going also kind of on top, also of other areas. Eh? It's because um, later we just cover it with um, uh, with darker color. So here you can, for example, I will go with this ochre since it's warm. I will do more like on the right side where we have the lightning. And the next step, I will take brown with white that will be like pale brown. And then I can go on light parts that um, uh, but they are a bit more brownish, more cold. Yeah, so we can, so we, we have light areas with two different. Uh, so maybe on the, not so much on the left side, more on the right. Just a little. And, and then actually kind of, I can continue working in the same pile. Um, and then I just add, yeah, as usually more white and a little touch up of the brown. Yeah, and then if not enough, you can get a bit more. Yes, and then I got my color like, I don't know, maybe it's like cappuccino color or something. Like that. And then I go the same, but with other, yeah, it's more or less like almost everything else. Now I can go with this light brown cappuccino color and and then later even on top, I'll be precising. Okay? Mm -hmm. 
it. Yeah, so this big part of the body on, on the left. And again, it's like a base color. And then later we will put all these other more intense ones. Yeah, and I go really fluffy with, with my brush. So it's also a little bit as a part of the yeah, bunny itself, its style. And Um, so uh, once we did this, this base layer, I would suggest we take, uh, we switch for a um, thin brush and we go for, um, for black. So we will do the eye and we will do this, uh, the nose, the mouth, because then it, at once we will have this bunny feeling. And then later we um, continue playing with just straight uh, brown and other black intense. Yeah. Some, sometimes it's good to, to make eyes uh, like quickly, you know? So sometimes you do it like really in the end of your painting. Um, but sometimes if you start, you do them quickly, then it also helps because you already have the feeling. Yes, uh, my brush is, has very little water. Yeah, so if it's watery, you can just clean it with your uh, with paper towel because you don't wanna, you want it just like sitting the dots for your eyes. Yes, and keep in mind, they are small. Um, it sh it sh they shouldn't be big, shouldn't be a big spot of black there. Yeah? It's just, especially on this eye on the left, it's more hidden. So we see just a little bit. Yes, and remember to leave a little bit of um, white around. Yeah, meaning so even if now you have already this light brown or light ochre, it's okay. But then later when we now go with darker, you still kind of keep. Yeah. Keep some contour. Yeah, yeah so sometimes when, for these small details, you kind of even not, not really moving your brush, but more like sitting. Yeah. And for example, now I've yeah, did a bit too much black. My, my white spot a bit too small, then I'll just wait and then sit on top white acrylics. Yeah, so it's... Uh, yeah. And then I do those three lines of the nose. Maybe some some touch-ups, but also not like around the face. Maybe not too much with the with the black. Yeah, it's still better to go um, first with with brown. Huh? Then I'll, I'll just stop switch. Otherwise, sometimes um, yeah, if you do too much with this black contour, it might look um, dark, dirty yeah, in the end. So let's. I mean. If later after brown, it looks uh, that somewhere you need more accents, yeah, where like the lightest part is meeting the, then you can end even like brown mixed with black, yeah. And so now I'm taking just pure brown as it is. Um, and again, my brush is not very wet. So I, I just use these dry brush strokes. And I go playing with the, now already precising the dark parts. Huh? Uh, if, if your brown feels too light, 
Yeah, you can mix kind of two piles. You have, can have this straight brown and then next, next to it, you can mix brown with black and then you can have it yeah, a bit more maybe darker if. Yeah, so for example, there is a bit more darker where the eye, this eye on the left, yeah, and just the start of the ear. And just like by the way the bunny is sitting, that's where the um, there is um, kind of shadow. Right? And then, and then again, I go with those kind of fluffy strokes. Um, yeah, sometimes let's say I can put the strokes, and then I wash my brush a bit. I, I, I like take some excess of the water, and then I can just go like blend a bit out. So it can be both. Let's say strokes that I'm putting, but then also some um, you know, play around. Maybe it's also good to mix ochre with brown. So if you feel that your bunny is getting too dark, then mix ochre with brown, and then you're also getting this. Um, you know. So go slowly, don't go with like too much this black uh, blackish brown yeah and if when, when you go with this blackish brown then always start with those parts that you know for sure yeah you see it's just because of the shape there is this shadow parts so i go there yeah and then for the other parts that are kind of half on the light half in the shadow then um then you already later kind of decide uh, yeah, how, which color. Yeah, so for example, here under the, his little hand yeah, is also, um, or in between the hand and the face, I can also put a bit more darker, yeah, because it's, one object that is hand touching yeah, uh, the head, and there is, of course, will be some uh, shadow. Yeah. And then from time to time, I just clean my brush. It has some paint, but very light, and then it's watery. And then I can go and kind of with watery, I just, yeah get in a bit, get in a bit of my strokes that, that I did. And the ear, so it has also been kind of, let's say two, three lines, yeah, there is, and why it is, it's also the shape, it's thickness. So with this light line, let's say if I'm talking now about the ear on the right that we see not completely, then I see kind of inside part, then I see white line that is thickness. And then I see, let's say the upper part. Yeah? And the other ear that we see like bigger, yeah, then, um, I also on purpose prolong a bit this this bigger air. Let's it's a painting. Let's make it look more funny, funny, fluffy. And then I you kind of jump. So sometimes I do the dry brush strokes 
And then sometimes I switch to a bit watery brush and kind of just cover with some watery tone and right. Yeah. And then generally also see, so your uh, left part of the bunny should look a bit more darker than, than the right one. Um, yeah, or it means maybe you can put it just a bit more um, yellowish yeah, on the side, the right side, and then a bit more brownish as well. Yeah, so either you show it with color or you can show it with um, um, so it can be like one color meaning that it can be one brown but then you just vary by by the tone in the end um, in painting the tones are more important than the color and tone it means uh, light and dark. So sometimes if let's say you are getting ready for the painting and like small sketches as analyze, it's very useful. And it means you just kind of mark for yourself um, which parts are light and which are dark and which ones are in, be in between. Um, yeah, so. And if by any chance you got like say now too dark with your bunny, yeah, then you can always go just straight with white paint um, on top. I'll, I'll show you I'll show now. So somewhere maybe you want you want lighten up. I want to let's say now lighten his forehead. Yeah, and it's already more or less dry there. Yeah, so just, I clean my brush, I clean it well. Clean it also water, paper towel. And then I just go on top. Can do first, let's say brush strokes. Yeah, since it's bunny and we still have his, or his fur. Yeah, or it can be the same, let's say waterish. Um, yeah. Sorry, Evie, are you using yeah. white now? Yeah, so what, I, what I'm like trying to show, so if I want to lighten up a bit some areas that let's say by accident I went too dark. So I'm just putting straight clean brush, clean white on top. And sometimes it makes you look the way it is better, but sometimes it gets a little bit kind of, yeah, whitish area. So then you just wait till it's till it's dry a bit, this white, and then I can go on top with some lighter um, mix. Yeah. So I'll, I'll wait a bit for this area. Um, yeah, it's um, and and then yeah, it's so also for example putting the. Yes, the what acrylics more in watery consistency. Yeah, it helps you. You see the layer under it, and then you see also like with, with putting this one, it makes changes the tone a bit. Yeah, so yeah, of course it all, always looks better when yeah straight away on the paper you get a nice light. Yeah, transparent part, and and you keep it, because yeah, then later when you try to correct, uh, it always looks a bit bad. Yeah. And that's why planning light areas is is always more important. Yeah. All right. Uh, one can also take a rest from bunny. Yeah, let's say she did it. Sometimes it's, it's good here. 
you stop and you move and then you come back and already kind of. Um, for example, we can move to the basket and we can also do it in two steps. So first I take just ochre um, and then just go with the, um, uh, with straight lines, I take more paint. Yeah, so it's not watery, it's the opposite kind of more. Yeah, and I put bravely lines and then I change just the, the direction. Yeah, something like this. And then I will wait till it's dry and I will put some brown for shadow and some light, like white or something for yeah, to give it the feeling of, of shape. Yeah. But the more brave, the more kind of, yeah, you're gonna draw these lines. Um, always, the painting always looks better when, when sometimes you add those strokes. Yes, it's a bit more, I don't know, maybe Van Gogh uh, direction. Um, yeah, for example, uh, I can now mix my offer a little bit with white and the bottom of my basket I can make with a bit lighter sienna. So it's also, I'm thinking to, to do different, different, yeah, um, not, so it's not to the same. And then doing those vertical parts in basket. Again, doesn't have to be very straight, all equal sausage lines, but yeah, one a bit more bigger. Yes, yeah, so of course, the ones that closer to us are bigger. The one in the end, more small, thin, and also more like closer to each other. Yeah, so. In this case, now we are kind of trying to paint a feeling of the basket, then like precisely the details. Yeah, yeah so I've, I've worked with Ocher on basket and now we'll let it dry. Yeah, maybe work a little bit on this body of the bunny on a side of the basket. And yeah, there is also just here at the corner, there is some shadow of his body. Yeah, but not don't make it too too black, too dark. Yes, this is all this part is kind of very not the main hero. Uh, it's the face and where the viewer should be looking. But if you make here too dark, then, uh, this spot will be catching, uh, catching the eyes. And and then, okay, I'll continue with basket. So, yeah, then I just go to brown. And again, don't repeat all the yellow lines. Let's say putting, yeah, now brown lines in parallel to all of them. Yeah, somewhere I put like bigger brown. Somewhere I put the brown, but just like a little less stroke. So I want to create yet yeah, shadow of, the feeling of shadow, so it's, but not. That's why for, for this part, I like to have the, the dry uh, brush. So it's also giving this, those strokes and kind of um, the brush helps me with, with what my intention is, yeah? And intention is that 
it's not one straight line, but kind of just the touch up. Yeah. Yeah, so for this upper part of basket, I put brown because it's a shadow. Yeah, I also put some brownish at the bottom. Yes, and I already do it kind of, I don't go to fill up my brown because I want here it to be a bit lighter. And what I can do also kind of this brown that I have put at the bottom of the basket, I prolong it a bit to the shadow of the basket. So kind of connect yeah, a little bit. Yeah. And the shadow very light, very light. Yeah, don't let's not to. You can always, uh, if you've put a bit too much paint with water, you can uh, lose it up. Yeah, so I just put clean brush with water and then kind of take take off a bit. Yeah, and later we put the, the table around the color so it will also. Yeah. And then with this light brown, I can go a bit also with the basket. And, and this middle part, then we are making variations again um, of the sides. So the side on the right, I would generally leave it more light. And the side on the left. And again, I do the strokes, then I wait till it's dry and then I can fill in between with my watery brush. Yeah, but give it like one minute to, to dry because then when you get in with your watery brush, those strokes, they stay, yeah, they, they're not. Yeah, since we are with, with browns, maybe I can straight away put a few strokes for the table. Or, or it's a ground and yeah, but we have this. Um, let me know if you're good to go for doing eggs. Then we just go kind of together and uh, so it's the story about um, the volume. So it's, Yeah, also if your basket also got a bit too dark, you can again go with white somewhere directly on top and it will create a bit kind of white areas. Yeah.
uh, one should also be careful with um, those white areas that sometimes you leave like um, just a white paper because sometimes uh, they start like I used to say, you know, jumping out from general. So then it's also you just go with some watery uh, color, some neutral brown and and layer them. Yeah? So then in the end, maybe they're, they still stay lighter than the rest of the painting, but a bit calm down the, the whiteness. Yeah? So for example, around the eyes, the ones I told you to leave, yeah, and then later you can check and yeah, so then sometimes then they are too white and you can yeah, calm them down a bit. Yeah. And what I do also, I come back for some accents Let's say the bunny, so here under the head and where his hand is, yes, this darker. Um, so I was, uh, I've started talking about the tones and the color, so um yes tones are more important in your painting because this is what gives you this uh, the combination of light and dark and when you put to the um uh, like where your main hero or your main point of the painting is there you put the more contrast combination the darkest next to the lightest area yeah, so it's very, for example, if you look at Rembrandt paintings, this is a very classical example. You see the whole painting is something like blue, with some yeah, brownish colors, and then somewhere in the middle, he has like the lightest stroke of light and then the darkest shadow. And this is where we are looking. And yeah, so one should kind of think about it and not create too much combinations of those, like not everywhere yeah, in the painting, but um, yeah, keep on choosing. Yeah, what about the eggs? Shall I give you some some time, or we move to to the eggs? Give thumbs up. Yeah, good. <laughs> I see Darren, thumbs up. Very nice. Um, again, so if I want to create this feeling of that the, our egg is spherical, yeah, then you need, you start with the lightest part. So you, I can even cover the whole egg with this light yellow. Uh, leaving this highlight, the circle of highlight. Also, in the start, you can leave it as a paper. And then later, if you see, yeah, it's a bit maybe too much, then you can also calm down this part. But first, then I start, I put my light, light yellow. And okay, maybe I do. I'm lazy to mix orange today. I will do the other X also yellow. Yeah, so, so I see this yellow is a base color. And then, um, then I go straight to yellow, not mixed with um, white. And I start with the most shadowish part. And uh, I go slowly. Yes, because we know it gets lots of um, like the shadow, this darker part gets easily to our lightest parts and we should kind of uh, be careful. We, we need to leave this. And now I want to blend it. So I clean, I clean my brush, I clean it well. I even wipe it if needed. And then let's say I can come back 
to my light mix again. And then I just uh, yeah, blend the, the border. Yes. And for blending, it's always to stay on the safe side. You go with the light into dark. Uh, and then later, if yeah, it looks that still not enough, then you uh, might then you easily add a bit more dark. Yeah. And here, maybe I can even to my yellow eggs, I will add a bit more sienna because I feel it's not enough with my um, with my mix. Yeah. The only thing, don't add white into your shadow. Part. So if I take now sienna, don't mix sienna with white and go for the shadow part because white still is always um, yeah, kind of, you, can, you can feel uh, it's, it's yeah, so. yes and again I see these dark sienna areas and then I clean clean my brush. And then sometimes even just with a clean brush that it's a bit wet, the blending works or with some tone in it. Yeah. Let's do the same exercise with blue. So maybe not blue, blue, I don't know. Yeah, it will be again the, <laughs> uh, the Ukraine flag if I go with blue. Yeah, why not? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, yeah, and again, first I mix blue with white and we remember that blue is catchy color. So really little, tiny bit of blue into my white mix, yeah, so I have this really light sky blue. And if I want to color all the egg, yeah, sometimes it's easier instead of creating the... And now I can start darkening a bit. And I start with the darkest shadowish part and slowly move to yeah. but for those eggs that are kind of hidden behind it's not already not so it's already there there is already more the story about that they had some shadow from other eggs yes this is something more that you should kind of take a look yeah. Green. Yeah, so I had yellow leftovers, blue. So I've created green very easily. Just mix those two. I mean, not, not necessarily go for the. And here on green, I didn't make the highlights. So now I can come back and try with my white paint inside it's always a bit more complicated to create highlight later uh, but i mean but if you forgot or something or you accidentally put too much uh, with the i mean with acrylics you can do it if it would be watercolors then uh probably not uh, then then it's just a new paper yeah, and then it can go and precise a bit, maybe some dark parts on the eggs, some borders maybe. Yeah, here again, where the one egg is touching the other egg, a bit more darker, the line of connection, the shadow. Mm 
Yeah, so the exercise of building an apple or an orange, you know, like this classical, you put it. And also, especially if like you put a real apple in front of you, yeah, or orange or tangerine, and you uh, arrange, let's say, a lamp around it. So you can have like really intense uh, highlight, shadow, half shadow reflection, shadow on the table and like the practice then, um, yeah, because in the end, the story is always the same in, in all these things. We have a source of light. Uh, it's, it's only, of course, let's say, maybe now with the bunny, it's a sun. So with the sun, then it depends. If it's cloudy, then you will not have such precise um, highlight. It will be more, um, like blue root, yeah. And also if it's metallic object, then these white highlights, of course, are like with the with the line. Yeah, but if the object is more like an egg, yeah, an apple, then the highlight doesn't have the borders. It's more uh, yeah, so there are some details, but that's and yeah, also, yeah, now we've worked with the like eggs basket. Now I take a look back to my bunny and then I can, now I feel I want to lighten up maybe a bit some areas if I feel my bunny maybe too, somewhere too dark. Yeah, and that's already like he's more dry. So I can, yeah, it's, it's, I find it's good to kind of leave it for some moment and then come back. Uh, it, it helps. Yeah. And for the for the background, you can choose. If you want, first you can color it all yellow, and uh, and then you put with a sponge, yeah, the, the grass. Um, I did it the opposite. Usually, I put with the sponge the grass, and then yes, with the same technique that when it's dry, then with like watery acrylics, I just go and get in between the the emptinesses. Um, I think, yeah, both is working. It's, um, but somehow I prefer first to do the sponge. And yeah, and of course for the sponge, you need more paint. So just mix uh, somewhere a bigger pile of green, green that you like, yeah, maybe can be not intense green, uh, maybe it can be a, a more like ochre, pale, yeah. Um, And yeah, and just with the sponge. Yeah, and then remember the sponge the same as the brush. First, it gives you intense points, but uh, continue working with it uh, even till yeah, the, it gives you less. Then you just go for some upper parts uh, and. Yeah, 
but very nice. I love the sponge it <laughs> so quickly and something you, you can't do with the, like those, those points you can't make with the brush. Right? So. Yeah, it's a little bit also like the palette knife that sometimes when you use it and it gives you such strokes that brush won't, won't, be, won't be possible to brush. Yes, and, and now I go for the yellow. I can start it on top. Yeah, as I just you also make the background yellow. It's a bit kind of yeah, the color of Easter sun. Yeah, makes makes it warm. I mean, instead of making let's say blue, like if one would be the sky, but um, Yes, and I mix my my yellow with white, so but they're not so intense. It's, it's background, so maybe like yeah, if if needed now, even now I made it too intense. So if it happens, you put too intense, then I just go with um. I quickly put lots of water on top, and actually with the same with the like the other side of sponge where it's clean, I can also wipe it a bit and it can help me first get through the, like get it even. Yeah. And, and then with this yellow, I can go, um, yeah. And again, I still feel my yellow got too yellowish. Then I just put, directly white paint on it and it becomes nicely more pale yeah? so and at this moment my green is more or less dry so i get in with my yellow yeah if it touches and mixes somewhere with green it can even look nice yeah. So um, here, here is the difference that um, if you work, let's say, first with yellow, you put you just color all background yellow, and then you go with green on top. Then your green will be brighter, and yeah? because now I'm putting yellow on top, and it fades out a bit my green. So here you can decide if you say, okay, that's the background. I don't want to be too too bright then it kind of helps to fade it up a bit. Yeah, and also maybe not everywhere, not all the greens. Yeah? And if you need it, you can go on, then on top with more green on top. Yeah? So, yeah, and now I feel my table, maybe I can do a bit, darken up a bit my table. So if like if your shadow of the basket get lost a bit in case, yeah, if not, maybe the opposite. Your shadow of the basket looks too separate, then you can unite a bit. Yeah, so uniting, it's also one of the things that one should always do painting any painting, yeah, going towards the end, like color wise, it's always, the painting looks better when the parts are, are more united. If the, it's the shadow area, check, um, you know this technique when you halfly close your eyes and when you do this, then 
all the shadow shadows they become one so it's also a good way also if you have some object in front of you and you halfway close and then then you see where is the lightest light and then all the shadows they become one and this is actually and then you from looking from the object you start looking at your painting and it should look the same and then if you see there is some light um, that a, kind of jumps out of your main yeah whole shadow area and it means you just have to go and uh, correct it so this this checks yeah? because it's kind of easy to make to make the painting uh, uh, separated meaning like it's in, uh, so this moment of uniting it's kind of it's always always because of course we paint we paint in parts and um, Uh, so I will um, be traveling next weeks, and but I think I'll take computer and the art stuff with me. The only thing that probably um, I will not take acrylics, I will take oil pastel with me. So um, let me know if you're interested to do something with oil pastel. Yeah, then I will plan a range or we just make two weeks break then if you're interested in uh, acrylics, yeah? So this is the... I actually can't do next week anyway. Oh, okay. <laughs> then we can do... Sorry, I'm family thing on. Yeah, that's that's good. That's... Um, yeah. oh, of course, it's Easter probably, no? The... Yeah. Do a week break then? No? Yeah. What about Hans' family? We could possibly do next week, we but we yeah. have to go for a two-week break to have two weeks off and uh, come back. Uh, was it oh. the fair okay. okay, I'll check then with also with Jules and yeah, yeah with the it side. But what about oil pastel? Well, uh, I like oil pastel. Yeah. Okay. Well, so we'd be up for it if Jules was around. So uh, yeah, I, I found very nice paintings of the gun that work really nicely with the pastel, of course. And I think one of Monet. Yeah, he's also his classical, um, uh, what's the word, yeah, where the field with this grass, with this, uh, yeah, so can, can try it. Um, right, well, the also, picture I sent through you, I was going to say the picture I sent through is an interpretation of one of our house rabbits. So uh -huh. it's, it's a slightly different rabbit to yours, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, Mel, yeah. We... Did you send me already? Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's take a look. Oh, take a look. Karen, what you said. So cute. It's okay. cute. Yeah. Yeah. And I love how you change the ears. He's like, ha, huh, like a bit. One up, one down. That's, that's our boy. Yeah. <laughs> that's so sweet. Can totally be the yeah the, the card for Easter or go on the wall for the mood. Uh, so, for example, what we can do, Darren, and I can also do it on yep. my painting. Let's do the um, the in between parts, uh, the eggs. Let's put a bit darker yep. there. Yes. So we can okay. take, let's say, brown, and of course not not much, not make it, but because you know there is always this kind of dark triangles in between some, mm -hmm. um, yeah, when the objects are there, kind of. But try a bit, yeah, because yeah. still you're drawing nice light, so not to. It also can be like in between the maybe where where it's the basket, yeah. So then yeah. maybe. It looks more like they're sitting there in, in this. Yeah, so a little bit in between the eggs and 
also where the eggs touch the kind of basket, just a little shadow there and so the mail is still finishing up how about you karen yeah i'm um, miles behind <laughs> <laughs> oh because you take a, I have a very paper. no no i did it on a4 this week um oh. I, uh, I've got a very angry looking bunny, though I'm very unhappy with it. <laughs> but I'm going to, um, what I'll do is I'll wait until you've, because uh, you'll post it online, won't you, the, the lesson we've done yes, today. Yes, 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 I'll put it in. So what I'm going to do is go back and do it again. I'll also sort myself out with the WhatsApp app before um, next time we get together. Yes, that would be awesome, because we also talk during the week, we discuss like, if there's something we want to paint. Yeah, so because I always happy to get the suggestions from you. And yeah, so you're very welcome to participate in the WhatsApp chat. Um, in the email, I can send you my number. So once you're ready, you just yeah, drop me a message and I will add your number to the... Cool. Yes, nice. I'm happy you've joined our yeah group, Karen. <laughs> yeah, I am here. as well. I'm get... mm -hmm. I feel really slow compared with everybody else. I have to say, but um... Karen, it's not about comparing; it's about just having. This is yeah. true. Yeah. Yes. We all have. Come on! I keep on watching at your painting behind you, and it makes me think. Hmm, Evie, when you gonna do something like this? <laughs> So. Go for it, Evie. Yeah. You need to do it in the summer so you can work outside. True, true. Although there's dust, isn't there? But you know. Yeah. Yes. All right. I will stop recording here and then we.